Hey there, I bid you all a very good day uh, from KitKat and, 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 and me. He is here. Are you going to come and say hello? Yes? No? Hey, maybe? <laughs> Wave? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Day three. Um, something that I've just realized I needed to do, need to do, needed to do, is, uh, is to lower this horizon line a little bit. Um, so that I'm going to, to press on with. Um, I actually started out with the idea, but uh, it just comes in over here. I want to, yeah, so I'm going to just quickly do that. This is not, it's no biggie, no big deal at all. In fact, I'm just going to mark it off with my eraser. Just miss these things now and again. Well, such is the medium <laughs> that it is incredibly forgiving. So, in fact, in fact, I want to use <sighs> my little Let's press on with this then. Let's get that in place. You know, I sat down uh, and looked at this piece just before I switched the camera on, and I thought, there's something, there's something I miss here. Something is amiss. Something is a little bit too discordant. And then I realized. I'm, I'm, I was looking for this uh, this kind of uh, looming quality of these of these beasts, and uh, it was there. It was it was it was there, but just that there was. Something about it just wasn't quite making sense for me, and here we go. So, okay, nothing. As I said, no big deal. Let's sort it out. We're done, and we can continue. So, in a given, it just accentuates. Now that that low angle that I um, our vantage point here is is uh, 
that I'm actually that we are actually sitting in the grass. Low down. That's what I'm really what I was after with this piece. More or less. And today, I'm also going to be adding some yellows, some green, more brownie ochres, and so on. Let's start with this lovely lemon yellow I think nah, first I think that I need to scribble up a little bit more with my with my charcoal over here so let's do that good kid what do you think buddy And what I'm doing here is, is essentially filling in the contrast that was that sits behind the lighter the lighter tones of the lighter shirt uh, the lighter yes lighter tones of the grass. of the shadow area predominant shadow area anyway
also gives us some nice contrasting shapes, indistinct shapes, but contrasting nevertheless. Could get back up your mind. Why are you reversing on that thing? Lord. Ah, uh, doesn't know what he's doing. Now what? Now you're coming trump trumping over everything here. <laughs> uh, trampling, I should say. Mind you, cats don't trample. Dogs do. Goodness gracious me, this is a little hard bit. This gets more and more and more flinty. I guess there's a knot or something in this. There is, yeah. Now some yellowy stuff. I want to make it paler than that actually. I want to make it more lemony. Better, slightly better. So I'm, I'm, I'm put, what I'm doing is I'm putting in this very uh, sickly yellow and then I shall go over it in uh, in white to lighten it lighten it up extensively I'm not applying it very heavily, so
in and then go over it with my white Conte. Creating this is the, 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 the desired effect. So a strip of sun-kissed meadow the last bright streaks of the afternoon heading towards late afternoon as I said at the beginning so we've got quite long shadows and particularly because this is a, a sort of a, a, a gradual incline um, accentuating the shadows even further and of course behind uh, behind us so to, to the to the right over there behind and to the right um, there is there are trees and you know so on and then this meadow stretches all the way around us far down Perfect. I need to, what's that, no, not that, so also some sort of a mustardy, mustardy colour just to throw in here as well.
as I've been explaining, these uh, these cattle, these Nguni cattle, um, are highly revered, exceptionally cher uh, cherished animals, and and I realised something yesterday. I was as I was during the course of the day as I was pondering um, the manner in which these cattle are named in, in, in terms of their um, their markings um, and I still haven't quite figured out what exact what precise markings these are and I, I still have to study, it, study them a little bit more but I realised how observant and um, the, 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 these tribesmen were. I mean, a very brutal people. Um, In, in a sense of their sort of bloodthirstiness, etc. And I'm not talking now, but I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, you know. Um, but the, the, it is, it is a, it is ingrained in the culture of a very warlike nation, um, the Zulu people. Um, it doesn't take much to spark them off, and that unfortunately is what is. is used to great effect today in politics. But anyway, um, but at the same time, they were also obviously very much an, in tune with, with, the, with, with nature, um, and with Mother Earth all around. Because these, these were their prized these herds of theirs are, are, are absolutely prized and the observation I realize comes in with, in the naming of these prized beasts because they're named after all sorts of things that, that you would see around you. Um, birds, different, different birds, uh, feathers, f uh, you know, the, the, the birds markings, some of them are some of them are named after birds, um, the egret, the uh, whatever, uh, you know, just many, many different birds, uh, kestrels, um, um, uh, whatever, I can't, I can't even think now, but uh, birds' eggs, even the speckled, the speckled nature of a, of a particular bird's egg in other words looking at a at the at the at the eggs in a nest and going yeah that's the marking on on this beast let's call it that um particular lizards for example uh snakes even uh certain snakes they have called these beasts by the names given to the snakes um, because they resemble their markings in some way um, even to the to the extent of trees and leaves and beetles and all sorts of, of different um, different aspects of nature around So that takes a very, very strong um, presence and presencing in with regards to the world around and how we observe it. So 
or even just the flight of a certain bird, um, like the Luri, for example. I did I, I, I did a, a, a an artwork of a Luri some time ago. Um, that that flash of red, for example. Um, you know, even that which is motion rather than rather than actual markings. Um, that glimpse, and now they you know. It, it, we then given the name of a of a particular markings of a of one of these cattle, um, and I find that fascinating, really, um, because it just shows that of that deep connectivity with the world around. When you think, ah, oh, these people, these very, very warlike people, aren't in touch with, aren't in touch with nature, aren't in touch with the world around. But there's a, it's very much a, an understanding, a comprehension. So there is a wealth of knowledge and wisdom and um, ah, worldliness, if you will, not in a, not in a not in in a, in a, in a Western sense, um, an earthing, a grounding that goes into this entire culture, the culture of the. The people, the culture of the Nguni. It's, it's, it kind of is almost, you can, you can, when you read about these things and when you look at, when you start to read the names and why they're called that and so on, it's, it's incredibly involved. Um, um, and when you start to look at that and you can see where how the the, the, the lyrics of Johnny Clegg and Juluka and Suvuka um, came, came to pass it's all about observation it's all about listening it's all about language um, or well, the language of observation. So, anywho, I thought I would share that with you because there's so much more to to these to these tribes than than what meets the eye, especially for people not here, uh, people not of this country, uh, who haven't lived here for many years. Um, and even for myself, it's, it's a case of just gaining a new perspective. It helps me to, because I, I, I hold I give appreciation for the world around me every day, and when, when I do that, I take it, I take it all in, and I give thought to everything that I see and everything that I, and I take time to let it settle in. Um, and when it does. And when that deep sense of appreciation begins to take a grip, the troubles and the, the crap that goes on in the world around, beyond, 
is is largely irrelevant becomes largely irrelevant because that's just stuff that happens and it will come and it will go this what we see around us the world around us the trees the plants the flowers the sky the uh, um, the wind the air um, is what is constant the rest is just passing the rest is just emotion yes viruses blah 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 etc et um, who we are is what's important in all of this What I give focus to, what I give gratitude for every single day is what I attract. And even if it is, even if it is elusive to a degree as well, it just gives me a sense of balance and equilibrium. And I don't expect others to grasp that. But it's, it's, uh, everyone lives the world according to how they see it. So, uh, for me, the important stuff is, is how blue the sky is, is how green the leaves and the trees are, how, how, they differ in shade, um, in their tint, in their in their specific colour. Um, the different strains of grasses, the weeds, even. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so we largely have this routine most of us m most of us um, and we have this routine of, of going to work every day how much of that how much of that world passing us by as we as we drive to work or as we sit on a bus or a train or a something in a taxi, um, how much of that world passing by do we do we really take in? Because it's the same it's the same scenery every day, every day, to work and back home from work. It becomes it becomes so monotonous that we do it virtually unconsciously, so that we don't see the little idiosyncrasies. We don't see the the subtle changes. Um, because we're too busy thinking about we thinking about work, we're thinking about whatever it is that we're thinking about, but it's not this. And then it's gone to be revisited the next day, but not quite. Anyway, um, just a, 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 a few observations that I had, and it, it, it was really the naming of these creatures that, that got me thinking about this, um, that how much, how much attention is paid to the specific markings of a, of a delicate little, little bird's egg and how it relates in terms of its color in terms of its speckle to this to the um, to the markings on these great big beasts 
you know, an egg, a little egg that's probably this, the size of his, <laughs> he could fit three into his nostril. Um, yeah. So, again, this is why I'm, I'm kind of drawn to these kind of, these, my subject matter. It's not about, it's not about depicting something, a pretty scene. It's, 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 it's something about, it's the why factor. You know, it's something about it that, that draws me in, that wants me to observe. Almost inexplicable. A lot, a lot more work still to do on these, on these four animals. Um, normally, I do just the other way around. Normally, I would put in the sky and the and the grass and what have you last. But <laughs> it shows how my style of doing things has changed over the last number of months even.
And this book that I showed you yesterday, um, the um, the abundant herds, um, and 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 how it goes about, you know, illustrating how these how these animals were named, and so it'll show the cow, it'll show the uh, the 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 animal and then next to it it will show the the animal that it is named after um, which is and it's so beautifully illustrated it really really is so that uh, you can absolutely see how they came came by this name but it would have taken some you know it's like it's like You know, these guys were very tuned into to nature, to what's to what's around, to all of the snakes and the, all of the birds and all of the insects and you know some of them were named after insects and some of them were named after you know like uh, a praying mantis and you know, all these different things. So so the, the level of observation to another. And to enable comparison like that is just mind blowing to me. Um, really profound. Hey, Kit Kat. Yeah, it's really quite amazing, I think. Um, And you can see exactly how they came to that conclusion. But, you know, to go, well, here's a, a great big cow and here's an egg. Or <laughs> a number of ants. <laughs> but you can see how, because you see the markings of that are, that are illustrated and then you know, how they came, how they arrived at that. A flock of egrets. Incidentally, I have until Friday with this piece because uh, I think I mentioned yesterday was it that I was, or, or, or was it Monday that I have a wedding that I'm going to be going to? And I thought I thought I might be going up on the Friday, but uh, I shall only be going up on Saturday. So I have the full week if necessary to complete this piece. Don't need to. I don't need to rush it. Now, let's use a little bit of my trusty eraser for some nice subtle blending just here and there where it's needed As I've said on, on, on numerous occasions before, um, when I'm working with, when I'm working like this, um, the erase the eraser as a tool. Now, and as I, I've explained this a few times, so you know, at school, um, you know, 
you're taught to use an eraser to rub stuff out, to remove. Um, I never did art at school, but had I done so, I would have been told that the eraser is banished. If I had done fine art, <laughs> an eraser is banished, banished even, even in terms of graphic design. You very seldom use an eraser because you want to get it right the first time. Um, and so kind of have this, always had this assumption, you have always had this assumption that eraser is just for cheating. <laughs> yeah. Um, for undoing mistakes. Interesting, hey? Um, and here I am. I, mean, I, I, I think I picked this. I picked this up the one day, and I thought I wasn't trying to rub. I wasn't trying to erase something. I was trying to. I was trying to. Just kind of blend something, and 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 then it started to work. So that now I use this eraser as a wonderful tool. I mean, it works so well with grass. Uh, uh, um, it breaks lines that I have. Um, it creates these little smudges and these little. It just is absolutely wonderful, and and uh, for me, it's a it's an essential tool of my in my set. Absolutely essential. So yeah. The humble eraser. Who would have known? I don't know how many other artists there are out there that, that use an eraser, especially with with drawing like this as a tool. Can't use it with paint, of course, but mind you, haven't tried. Anyway, I shall I shall endeavour to complete that grassy section at a later stage. Now, at this point, however, I want to just add in a little bit of reddish brown and so on ah, with this character over here. A much darker brown than that. That one there and that one there. Just to establish a richness to the shadow area. And so that it's not black, black, black. using these upward strokes because the skin, the hide of this animal is um, very wrinkled, but the wrinkles are in a, in a um, vertical manner.
Hmm. Um, what else can I bring in here? I should bring in a... That's the colour. Also, a little bit of orange. No, not that one. Marigold. Yes. Just to bring a little bit of fiery redness into this into this pelt. And then of course on top. And even when I'm actually Closely observing the markings of this this bull, I'm still not quite getting the markings. I I'm still not quite a hundred percent sure as to as to what he is indeed. And it's so such is the complication of these markings, the different you know whether they whether they've got black markings on the head and brown on the body and white underneath and then the, uh, uh, the egg of a bird. Um, <laughs> it's very difficult to... That's why I said it. It, it, is, it is... Such is the level of observation in the naming of these, of these animals. And quite incredible. Not so, Kit Kat. He's just curled up behind here. And he has fairly short stubby horns, not like this great stretch over here. Um, and those two are, are, are taken into account when it comes to the naming of the animal um, or, the, or, or the specific type. It's just endless. Some of them have horns that one horn will go up and the other one will go down. Um, that has a name. So... <laughs> yeah. Again, um, what I'm doing here, I'm working very, it's, it's, I can't get precise. So I, that's what I've been exp trying to explain, that I, I cannot get precise detail with these, uh, you can see that they're, they're stubby and squared off. Um, so... I try to create the illusion and I'm going to at a point during this piece I'm going to bring it closer to you to see um, or, or to maybe bring the camera closer so that you can see what I mean in terms of 
what you're seeing over there is 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 great detail but it ain't <laughs> and that's this is what i love about the, the creating this creating this illusion close up it's just smudges and marks and what have you um, an assemblance of an assemblance of form however it's absolutely not This, this guy is quite rotund there uh, they've got these sort of narrowish shoulders but by comparison to their belly then expands out very wide so they obviously munch and munch and munch like machines all day and the bellies fill up so the so that so then the narrow shoulders and the and the very wide belly And if you look at some of the big cats as well, cheetahs, um, lions, etc., they also have, um, well, they've got fairly narrow shoulders, but then their, then their form goes in so that they're, you know, between their, between their ribcage structure and their hips, they are very narrow. Um, and that's why cats have whiskers and the whiskers are always wider than what their body is. Well, not Kit Kat. He's just, <laughs> his whiskers don't even come close to being as wide as his body is. But by and large, that's what it is. So that when these cats are passing through, passing through grass, they know exactly where they are. They're positioned um their surroundings um and that's why they can do so so silently um i don't know why i got into cats but anyway um i think i am out of time however oh yes goodness i'm talking about cats and rats and what have is um, and I'm and I'm out of time so let me leave it at that for today so we've got some decent color going in there um, he's the only one with color incidentally so the rest are sort of black and white mostly for the most part anyway so thank you for joining me today once again thank you for enduring <laughs> my mental meanderings and uh yeah do, do join in do join me again tomorrow um as i continue um yes it's turning into a rather interesting piece isn't it um thoroughly enjoying it as always uh yeah so <laughs> anywho oodles and oodles of toodles and uh do have a fantastic day further thank you for thank you for uh sharing my work thank you for um your comments, etc. Every day, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, yes, my happy followers, <laughs> subscribers, I should say. Yes, on followers on Instagram, friends on Facebook. Well, friends, followers, subscribers, whatever you might want to call yourself. <laughs> Thank you for being there. See you again soon. Bye. <laughs>